My name is Nick McPhee, and in this video we're going to take a quick look at the Dr. Racket programming environment and see how we can use it to evaluate expressions of different types and define expressions for reuse. We'll look at integers, strings, and booleans, as well as simple manipulation of images. I'm going to assume you have Dr. Racket already installed, or you're at a computer that already has Dr. Racket installed, like in the computer science lab, and that you've gone ahead and started Dr. Racket up. One thing to check before we start is whether the language is set correctly. Dr. Racket supports multiple programming languages as well as different flavors of the Racket language itself. So look at the small menu on the bottom left. It should be set to Beginning Student. If it's not, go to the Language menu at the top and select Choose Language. From that dialog, you should be able to select Beginning Student. If you change the language selection, you'll see that the language in the bottom left is highlighted in yellow. This tells you that you need to hit the Run button at the top right to activate the new language choice. Now that we have the language set, we can evaluate some simple expressions involving numbers, strings, and booleans. So let's start with just some basic numbers. We can do things like add 2 plus 3, and we find that that's equal to 5, which is very exciting. And we can do more complex things, so we could say multiply the sum of 2 and 3 and the difference of 7 and 4. 2 plus 3 is 5, 7 minus 4 is 3, 5 times 3 is 15. Hey, 15 is what we get. So we can do things with numbers. There's actually more numbers than this. We also have rational numbers and floating point numbers, which I'm not going to talk about right now. Um, we also have things like strings. So we can use double quotes to say, hey, I have a string, a sequence of characters. And just as there are functions that act on numbers, like plus and minus and times, um, there are functions that act on uh, strings. So we can do things like string length and say, hey, what's the length of the string Morris? It is six. There are six characters. Um, and there are things like string append, which take strings and run them together and make a new string. So we could say University of Minnesota and Morris. Oops, left out the S. And now this will join these two things together into a new string. Notice it doesn't magically put a space between the first string and the second string. So we have University of Minnesota Morris, which is probably not what we wanted. So we might uh, go back and put a space maybe here in front of the Morris, or even we can have multiple strings. So this is now three strings, University of Minnesota, space, and Morris. So if we evaluate that, we get the string University of Minnesota Morris with a nice space between them. So we can do numbers, we can do strings. There's also a type called Booleans, which is a fancy name for true and false, uh, named after George Boole, who was an important mathematician and logician in the 1800s. And those are written as pound sign or hash mark true and hash false. We won't do a lot with them directly, but they will frequently be the output of things that we, function calls that we make. So if we say something like is 2 plus 3, 5, the answer is true. If we say is 2 greater than 7, the answer is false. Okay, So we'll see those often as outputs. Uh, later on, we'll do things more explicitly with them. And then the last type uh, that Dr. Racket supports uh, as what they call fixed size types is uh, images. So there's actually cool direct support for images in Dr. Racket. So if we go to and look at the prologue of the text, How to Design Programs, second edition, there's an example here of a little rocket. And if we, uh, I'm right clicking, uh, uh, that might be a control click. Uh, depending on your browser. And one of my options is copy image. And if I say copy image, and then I come back to Dr. Racket, and I say paste, lo and behold, I get a little rocket image. And I can use that rocket image, and 
in the same way that there were functions like plus and minus and string length and string append for numbers and strings, there are functions that act on images. So I can do things like image, width, and I can paste my little rocket in. And, oh no, image width is not defined. So it turns out the functions that act on images aren't automatically loaded as part of the beginning student language. If we want to actually use those, we have to go up to the language and say add teach pack. Teach packs are collections of tools that are available um, as a library that you can add uh, to your system if you want. And we'll work with the images a lot, so it's good to add the image teach pack. So if we choose add teach pack, turns out there's um, a collection of, as it were, old teach packs from the first edition of how to design programs. And then there's a handful of new teach packs that come specifically with the second edition. Uh, and in general, the old ones work, but if there's a new one and an old one, you definitely want to use the new one. So in this case, we definitely want to use the new second edition image dot racket. So we say OK to that. And now notice this became yellow again. So we're going to have to hit run. And now we have, we're beginning student and we have the second edition how to design program image dot racket teach pack. We should still have our little rocket. We do. So now if we say image height, or I think it was image width that I was doing uh, on the little rocket, we find the rocket is 28 pixels wide. And if I do image height on the little rocket, paste, the rocket is 42 pixels tall. And that makes sense because the rocket looks like it's maybe not quite twice as tall as it is wide, but certainly taller than it is wide. So 42 and 28, yeah, it makes some sense. As well as evaluating expressions in the interactions area in the bottom window, we can enter expressions in the definitions area up above and then evaluate them by clicking the run button. So up in the top, I'll get rid of this comment. I could say things like plus two, three. And if I hit run, it will evaluate this and display five. I could put multiple things in the top and it will display the results of all of the expressions that I include. So four times minus 10, uh, five, so that should be 20, four times five, and string length Minnesota should be 10. So if I hit run, I should see do, 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 five for the two plus three, 20 for the multiplication of four and 10 minus five, and nine for the length of Minnesota. So there are nine characters in the string Minnesota. We can also give names to expressions using define. This allows us to reuse things by name, which is crucial to building larger and more complex systems. So consider, for example, the string University of Minnesota Morris. Okay, that works, but it's long. And if I've got to use it in multiple places, that's going to get annoying. So it would be nice instead to define UMM to be that string. So here I'm giving a name, UMM, to this string. And if I hit run, it still evaluates this is 5, this is 20, and this is 9. Nothing was displayed for this, but the definition exists. And if I say UMM, I get the thing that I asked for. And I can do things with it like compute its length. Um, and I find 30. Okay, so that's actually super helpful if we want to reuse something um, and we want uh, to give it sort of a better name um, than just its constant. And one place where this becomes really useful is a little rocket image. So I don't really want to have to like paste the rocket in every time. Um, so if I give the name rocket to my little rocket image, and let's get rid of these guys because they're just going to be in the way for the moment. Um, and say run. 
Now, UMM is still defined, and Rocket is still defined. And I don't have to keep pasting, so if I want to say image height, Rocket, and image width, Rocket, I don't have to keep pasting my little image in over and over again. And I can reuse it in a variety of contexts, so I can do things like, well, what are the total number of pixels in the image? Well, that turns out to be the product of the height of the image and the width of the image. And instead of having to paste the little rocket in two different times, I was able to just use the name twice here and here and get that the total number of pixels is 42 times 28, which is 1,176. Lastly, we can use check expect to check that expressions have the expected values. This kind of testing is crucial to increasing our confidence in the correctness of our work and the work of others. Now, check expect will make more sense in some ways after we're actually defining our own functions, but it's important to be aware of it and there are places to use it early on just when we're trying to understand expressions. So uh, let's say our goal is to have some expression um, and we don't know what that is yet. We'll just call it stuff for now. And we want to say UMM should be the string University of Minnesota Morris. Uh, and let's actually say we need to build this out of some pieces. So uh, we'll say that the system is University of Minnesota and the campus is Morris. And we want to have some expression called UMM that is going to be University of Minnesota Morris. So we could use check expect, can't spell, and check expect takes an expression and a target and checks that the expression that you provide and the target actually match. So we'll have some expression uh, we'll say that's UMM, we'll go there, and we want UMM to be University of Minnesota Morris. Okay, now if we just run this, this will fail because stuff is pretty clearly not correct. So do, 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 yep, it's not happy. So we have a check failure, it says actual value stuff differs from University of Minnesota Morris. Oh, look, I misspelled Minnesota there. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to leave that alone on purpose for a second, um, and we'll come back and fix that. Uh, so it's telling us that at line six, uh, we have a problem. So if we click on this link, it actually highlights the line where something, where the check expect was that did the bad thing. So I'm going to hide that for a second um, so we don't take up all of our space with it. So we didn't really want, we, we knew stuff wasn't right, you know. So what we really were hoping to do was some kind of string append of the word system or the, the value of the name system and the value of the variable campus. So I'm going to be like, if we append this to this, that ought to give us the right thing. And so if I say run, do, 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 do. Hey, they still don't match. And notice it's that space problem again, okay? Ignoring the misspelling for a second. Uh, I still have the space problem that uh, we had earlier. So it's like, oh, yeah, right. We have to put the space in. So I'm gonna hide this again and string append system. And then I'm gonna put a space. So the string system, whatever, the value of this variable is, which in this case is University of Minnesota, because it's defined up here, then the string that just contains a single space, and then the, whatever the value of this variable is, which is the string Morris up here, so we should get University of Minnesota Morris. So now we'll run it, and it still fails. Now this looks right, and the problem of course is that the right thing doesn't match the wrong thing because I spelled my test wrong. This is demonstrates a problem that's real in the world, like that a test can be wrong because the thing you said you wanted was wrong because of a mistake, a misunderstanding about what was expected, I mean, any of a variety of things. 
Um, but now I think if we run, it should say, huzzah, that worked. And, you know, we can do other mathematical things. So we can check expect um, that, uh, for example, the sum of three times three and four times four is in fact 25. If we say run, it will say that both tests pass. So if tests pass, we just get this nice message. If a test fails, then uh, we would get an error like we had before. So if I insert a comma here, um, and let's say I change this to 27, now both the tests will fail. And it indeed shows two tests failing. At line six, we have that this one's not right because it has a comma in it. Um, and that this one's not right because we got uh, 25 when we were expecting 27. So if we change this back to 25 and we get rid of the comma and we run again, we get that both tests pass. Huzzah! Hopefully this was helpful. Questions always welcome.